Good afternoon. Thank you very much for such a warm welcome. And thank you to all, thank you to all of you who made this happen. To Hank and Anna Marie for your kind words and leadership. To the Regents, Connie Kravis and Ed Lazowska for your commitment to this exciting next phase of the program. And also to Brad Smith for Microsoft's generous contributions and for being here tonight. Wow, there certainly is a big crowd here. And it's my kind of crowd too. I could talk about garbage collection routines or memory management, and most of you would actually know what I'm talking about. So I feel right at home among those of you who appreciate the same kind of challenges that attract me. This campus has been home to me because not far from here in the university library that my father helped lead, I spent hours in the stacks as a kid devouring piles of books so I could follow the latest advances in science. And I spent a lot of time in the graduate computer science lab as a high school student. Of course, I didn't belong there, but the professors looked the other way until we wore out our welcome, as you can guess high school students would do eventually. <laughs> I still have the letter from the computer lab director, Dr. Helmut Goldie, kicking us out. <laughs> a couple of lines still make me laugh. <laughs> Dear Mr. Allen, it begins. He goes on to list the, the many and several reasons for kicking us out. One was that we would use all the terminals at once for such long periods of time that the lab became too busy and noisy. Because that's because all the other students at Lakeside where I went to high school would, would join me there. Two was that some of my co-conspirators hadn't properly checked out equipment. And the third and truly great offense still gets me. Earlier this week, the letter reads, you removed the acoustic coupler from Dr. Hunt's office without authorization. <laughs> it's true, guilty as charged. Since no one was using it, we'd taken it home so we could keep working off campus. <laughs> and here's the punchline. He said we'd taken it, quote, without leaving even a note. Such behavior is intolerable in any environment. <laughs> that was the last nail in the coffin, I guess. I'm still embarrassed we didn't leave a note. With that stern letter, our free time on UW computers came to an unfortunate and sad end. I bet a lot of you here, even those immersed in the study of computer science, are wondering what on the earth that mysterious box sitting right there is. It's called the Trafodata machine. Bill Gates and I handled the software side of it, but the machine was built here on campus by a UW student named Paul Gilbert, a partner Bill Gates and I recruited into our high school business venture. Paul did an amazing job turning maybe the first 8-bit microprocessor in Seattle into a real computer. I think Paul is here with us tonight. The idea was simple enough. We wanted to automate the traffic measuring process, part of which required high school students to count the holes punched into paper tape each time a vehicle drove over a black tube laid across the street. We wondered if there was a less expensive solution than a mini computer processing the tapes. And I had read, actually, in the computer science library about a new 8008 chip from Intel and suggested we try to build a machine based on it, which didn't turn out to be easy at all. But the traffic data machine you're looking at isn't only a vivid reminder of how far computers have come in the past few decades. I hope it's a lesson, too. Objectively speaking, the Trafodata enterprise was a failure as a company. Right as our business started to pick up, states began to provide their own traffic counting services to local governments for free. As quickly as it started, our business model evaporated. 
But while travel data was technically a business failure, the understanding of microprocessors that we absorbed was cru crucial to our future success. And the emulator I wrote to program it gave us a huge, lead, a a huge head start over anyone else writing code at that time. During my time on campus, when I wasn't taking advantage of unused computer time <laughs> on a professor's account, I was reading everything I could find in the computer science library in the old computer center down the hill. It's a key part of my approach to try and literally stuff my head with everything I can learn about a subject that fascinates me. If it hadn't been for our Trafodata venture, and if it hadn't been for all that time spent on UW computers, you could definitely argue that Microsoft might not have happened. I hope the lesson here is that there are few true dead ends in technology and entrepreneurship. Sometimes taking a false step in one direction positions you to push ahead in another one. And relentlessly absorbing the latest in technology can prepare you for that new path towards success. Here we are now in this magnificent building with construction started just across the street to, extend, to substantially expand this new school. To think that when we were building the traffic data machine, there wasn't even a computer science department here at all. And now this department is one of the best in the nation. With this next phase of expansion, expected, expected to elevate the school into one of the nation's top five computer science programs. Congratulations to everyone here on such extraordinary progress to the top. This is, a, this is an amazing program that trains and educates some of the world's best and brightest. I was fortunate to be able to convince UW, UW professor Orrin Etzioni to lead the Allen Institute of Artificial Intelligence. He and his team are doing tremendous work in Fremont. Which leads me to my concluding thoughts. What's next? You can't talk about computer science and artificial intelligence without thinking about the impact progress there will have on some jobs. But to me, the, pro the promise vastly outweighs the risk, in the same way that while the invention of the airplane negatively affected the railroad industry, it, opened mu it opens much wider doors to human progress. As more intelligent computer assistance comes into being, it will amplify human progress. You young computer science and engineering students, I envy you, I really do. You have a wonderful opportunity to put your skills and expertise to use solving the world's biggest problems. The amount of computing power you have at your fingertips for projects and the facility of the programming tools you can use far exceed anything we had back then. Just a smartphone that you have in your pocket alone is many thousands of times faster than the main machine, the CDC 6400, that students used back in 1972. And your programs are really only constrained by your imagination, instead of the small amounts of memory and disk storage we had back then. A few examples of what future ambitions, ambitious efforts could be might be improving climate modeling in order to help us deeply understand and simulate what is occurring now and in the future related to human-caused changes in our environments. Designing ever more intelligent vehicles that make our roads safer by preventing accidents, reducing congestion, and helping reduce carbon emissions. Building computer <coughs> programs that are capable of digesting text and understanding it in the full sense of that word to help researchers connect the dots and make progress more quickly based on the latest published scholarship. Or building models of biological systems from immune cells uh, to the basic cells in the body that will give us in insights into normal and disease states. Another, another area is advancing the state of robotics to create real helpmates for our aging populations and evolving, workplace, and evolving workplaces. 
we truly are entering a golden age of innovation in computer science with new techniques such as deep learning at our disposal and collaboration among different disciplines opening up new ways to build ever more innovative projects. And I want to honor you for your place at the forefront of this golden age. I look forward to watching the new Paul G. Allen School of Computer Science and Engineering continue to make profound contributions both to the field, both in the field and to the world. I look ahead with anticipation to the advances that will continue to flow from this school, advances that I hope will drive technology forward and change the world for the better. In fact, don't sign up for anything less. The world needs you to be bold and fearless. The belief in an audacious, <clears throat> the belief in audacious idea compelled us to start Microsoft. I hope you will keep in mind that if you're ever accused of being overly invested in your ideas, it may very well be a sign that you're on the right track. <laughs> Thank you again for this great honor today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>